Hey guys, welcome back to Fin Scales and Fluffy Tails. And today I'm gonna be talking to you about how to travel with your rabbit. I'm gonna try to get Daisy in this video today, so bear with me. She doesn't really like to be on camera. She's kind of shy, but I'm gonna try something different and try to get her on camera. So let me go get her and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to try to have Daisy in at least part of this video. Um, she's not used to being, she doesn't like being off the ground. She really, really just likes to be on the ground and come up to us when she feels like it. And because of the way I have to sit so you guys can actually see her, um, you can see my notes, which are sitting right next to me. So hopefully I don't have to look at them that much. I'm gonna try to get her to eat some of this lettuce. She might not be very interested, but I'm gonna hold her for a little bit, maybe not through the whole video. So, all right, let's, let's get into it. So this video is called Traveling with Rabbits and the thing you have to remember is that rabbits are prey animals, so they can get stressed out pretty easily. Um, Daisy honestly does pretty good with traveling. Once we get to our destination, she usually settles down pretty, pretty quickly, usually within an hour or two, and she um, adjusts pretty well to being in the new environment. So she is really great that way. However, I will say she can always tell when we're gonna be traveling and she doesn't like riding in the car. Um, and I feel like that is just kind of a rabbit thing, not really a daisy specific thing. Um, a lot of rabbits get stressed out from riding in the car. So that's just something you have to be aware of. Um, if you travel a lot and you want to get a rabbit and you want to take them with you, I would suggest getting a younger rabbit so that they can kind of adjust. Now, even though rabbits are prey animals, they can adjust to your schedule and um, the things that you do, especially if they're really bonded to you. So um, getting a younger rabbit is definitely something I would recommend if you travel a lot. Um, Let's see, I have to, um, Daisy is not super social like a dog, but you know, if they're in the past when there were times that I was going away for an extended period of time and I didn't really have anyone that I really trusted to watch her, then I would take her with me. But I will say that I only took Daisy on shorter trips. So um, last year I was living in Ohio and I took her, I drove with her from the Toledo area to central Pennsylvania over Thanksgiving um, for, a, for probably about five days, then a week before Christmas. And she was, she came with me from the Toledo area to Illinois. So that was about a five and a half, six hour trip. Um, for two weeks in January over uh, the new year. So Daisy and I did a lot of traveling last year and she did really, she did really well. Now, like I said, she doesn't like riding in the car, but she adjusts pretty well to new places. And she adjusted um, well to my parents' dogs. And uh, she even was coming up and asking for attention from my family members who she never met before in my in the house that I grew up in not my apartment so she was doing really well and I would say that you know she does well for a rabbit now when you travel with your rabbit in the car you're going to want to get a hard sided crate or carrier mainly because a soft sided carrier um, with a soft-sided carrier, your rabbit could potentially chew their way out of it, which you do not want. So you're going to want to get a hard-sided carrier, and you want to put hay in the carrier for your rabbit to eat. 
Now, as we all know with our rabbits, they could get something called GI stasis if their gut stops moving, which means they need to constantly eat. So you wanna at least give your rabbit the option to eat hay in their carrier on the transit um, instead of not giving them anything. Now I will be honest and say most rabbits will probably be too stressed to eat that much while you're in the car, but you want to at least make sure they have something. Um, let's see, when you are packing them, oh no wait, I missed a step. So before you put your rabbit in the carrier, you wanna make sure you have some kind of absorbent material on the bottom, either a fleece blanket or a washable puppy pad like I do for Daisy. And that is because they're probably going to pee in their carrier just because they have nowhere else to go. And um, you can't like, you are going to stop a few times on your trip, but you know, you need to make sure that they have something absorbent in case they are nervous and they pee or poop in their carrier. So you gotta have something on the bottom. You can't just stick them within a plastic carrier with nothing. Um, let's see, when you pack the carrier into the car, you want it to be on the floor and you want it to be secure. So what I do with Daisy's carrier is she goes on the floor in her carrier between the back seat and my front seat of the car. And I put the seat back, the front seat, I put it back so that the carrier is kind of squished between the back seat and my and my seat so that it doesn't move. You want the um, you want the carrier to be very secure in the car so that it doesn't move around or anything. Like if you have to stop suddenly when you're driving, you know, anything can happen. If you're in like a, fen a fender bender or some kind of accident, you want to make sure that that carrier is as secure as possible for your rabbit. So that is definitely something you want to consider. Um, and that's just for your rabbit's safety. Now Daisy's carrier does fit her and she fits well in it, but you know, she could still like, you know, jostle around in there, but it would definitely, it's definitely better for her to be in that carrier and with the carrier secure than if the carrier wasn't secure and we stopped the car and it rolled around or something. And um, when you stop, you can offer your rabbit water to drink and or try to have them go to the bathroom in their litter box. Come on, come on, Daisy. Okay, I'm gonna try to get her to stay on my lap for a little longer. But like I said, she's mostly used to being on the ground. So you can, you can offer them water and more food and hay and try to have them go in their litter box when you stop. But I found that for Daisy, she wasn't really into that. She didn't really, when we were driving, she didn't want water. She didn't want hay. She didn't want to go in her litter box. So she didn't. And like when we were, when I took her places, um, most of the time, like for the first time I drove with her, I tried to get her to go in her litter box when we stopped. I tried to offer her water and she wouldn't eat or drink anything or go to the bathroom. So we just kept on trucking. We just went straight on through. Um, but that is Daisy. Other rabbits will want a break and they will want the chance to go in their litter box and things like that. So it just depends on your, your rabbit and what they feel most comfortable with. Um, and then once you get to your destination, you're going to want to have a portable playpen for your rabbit, something that is gonna be light. I really like the um, light foldable ones that they make for dogs. And I'm gonna show you guys um, how I set ours up here in a second. But I really like those because they're light, they're easy to carry when you're traveling, not like a, um, a heavy metal X-Pen or something like that. Um, so the reason why you're going to want a little like enclosure, like a home base is because most likely where you're going, you probably won't be able to completely free roam your rabbit. So if you're not going to be home for a time, you're going to want to put them away because um, you're probably going to be staying in a hotel room that might not be rabbit proofed or you're going to be staying with a family member whose house might not be rabbit proofed or they might have other pets that aren't accustomed to living with rabbits. So that could mean disaster for your rabbit. Um, like if 
you don't have a place to put them. And of course, we all know that rabbits need exercise, but you will need a safe place to keep them if you have other animals that need to be separated or if you have to supervise them heavily when they're out. So I got one for Daisy. Um, we used it, I used it twice in Pennsylvania at my parents' house. It worked really well. My parents have two dogs, so free roaming Daisy the whole time we were there was not an option. Um, we, anytime I let Daisy out, the dogs had to be separated, put in another room behind a gate because, you know, they would, I don't think they would have hurt her, but they would have been too curious about her and she would have gotten really scared. So I had to have some kind of pen to put her in. And I also used it for a short time with Alex when I took her to Illinois when he was still living in his apartment. So that is um, a very useful tool that you'll probably need when traveling with your rabbit. Daisy, do you want some lettuce? She really, I tried to use this lettuce to get her to stay, but she's a little nervous, so she's probably not gonna eat. But she's doing really well up here. Okay, so most of the time, you know, when you go away, you're your rabbit is probably gonna be more comfortable staying at home like so what I suggest is if you are going away for a weekend so let's say you're leaving Friday night and you're getting back on Sunday as long as you set up a big enough area for your rabbit with some kind of X pen where they can't get into anything and you leave them plenty of hay and water and pellets um, I wouldn't suggest feeding them um, fresh vegetables at, during that time, mainly because you won't be there. I personally don't think you need, oh, sorry, Daisy's hair is sticking to my makeup, but you don't really need to have a sitter come in if you're only leaving for two nights, mainly because your rabbit will only be alone for one full day. So Saturday is the only day that you will not be there at all to come check on them. So when that happens um, when Alex and I leave for a weekend, we will usually set up her large pen enclosure with her own little carpet. We'll have both of her litter boxes in there. We'll leave plenty of food and water for her to have while we are gone. Now, if it's only two nights, we don't usually bother getting a sitter because it's only two nights and we're gonna be back on Sunday. But if you're leaving for a longer trip or you know, you would feel more comfortable getting a sitter, then this is what I would suggest for you. So, like I said, set up a large enclosure for them. I would not let them free roam in your house. Oh, these hairs. I would not let them free roam in your house while you are not there to watch them. Also, I would keep them at your house. I would really advise against taking your rabbit to someone else's home to be babysat mainly because your rabbit will feel much more comfortable in their own home. So when you go on longer trips, like if you're going on vacation for like a week, um, we have, Alex and I have our sitter come every day, mainly because she's an older lady and she loves Daisy and she wants to come twice a day. So, you know, she likes to come and feed Daisy in the morning and then she will come in the evening and change her water bowl again. So she gives her food and water in the morning and she'll come and change her water bowl at night as well. I don't think that's absolutely necessary. Like I said, our neighbor that comes over is older. She's retired. She doesn't have a job. So she can come over. She has the time to come over whenever. And we don't um, ask her to let Daisy out because Daisy is not like a dog. She will not just go back in her pen when you want her to. You kind of have to corral her. And since our sitter, we trust her completely. But since she's older, we really don't want her to have to deal with chasing Daisy down to get her back in the pen when it's time for her to leave. So we just set up a large area for Daisy so that our sitter doesn't have to worry about that. Um, but if you were having, if you were paying somebody to come to your house, now if you have somebody that wants to come every day and is totally fine with it, then go for it. But if you're, if you have to hire a sitter, I would say they really only need to come every other day. They really don't need to come to your house every single day, as long as they're leaving enough food and hay and water 
for two days, they will be fine coming every other day. So um, that will save you a little bit of money. However, if you are going away for an extended period of time, like if you're going away for two, two and a half weeks, you will probably have to show your sitter how to do some things that are a little bit more involved, like cleaning your rabbit's litter box. Now, Alex and I have never been gone that long, so we don't usually have our neighbor clean Daisy's litter boxes because she has two of them. But if you have, if you only have one or you're going away for a really long time, you can't just leave their litter box for two weeks. So you will have to show them how to do it and they will probably have to clean it out at least once. So that is another thing that you'll have to consider. So Daisy did really, really good for this part of the video. Say hi, Daisy. Hi. Hi, say hi. She did really good for this part of the video. Um, and now, um, I'm going to film the clips of me showing you guys the pens that I have for her and how we set those up. So I'm going to put her on the floor and maybe I'll put in a clip of her eating lettuce. So let's do, now it's time for part two of the video. Something else I wanted to mention that when you go away, you want to try to make um, taking care of your animals as easy as possible for your sitter. So we're going to be gone for three days. We're leaving Thursday night and coming back on Sunday evening. So Daisy will need to be fed three times when we're gone. So what I have done is I have portioned out her three days of food into these three baggies and this is her digestive support tablet and I've already put that in there so that the sitter doesn't have to worry about remembering to give it to her so all she has to do is open up these little bags of food and put it in her enclosure and this little table will be set up right next to her enclosure for the entire weekend and this right here is Daisy's hard-sided carrier which I wanted to show you guys I'm put it kind of next to Daisy so you can see. So that's about how big it is compared to her. Um, and I took the door off of it because, um, I, I took the door off because I she uses it as a hide sometimes because we usually have it out just in our house. And so she will go in it on her own as you can see she's exploring it. And right now it doesn't have the pad on the bottom because I washed it today. So a lot of Daisy's stuff got washed today and she took a break from eating her green leaf lettuce. But this is her enclosure, I mean her carrier. The door would go on the front here and these little levers go like this. So you can put the door in, they go like that on all four, on all four corners. And then the door would swing open. You can have the door open either way, which that's kind of nice with this carrier. Um, I only paid like $17 for this carrier and it works really well. It's made out of a really sturdy plastic and how you take it apart is you turn these little knobs and then you just lift the top off. Now as you can see under here, there are these little hooks that kind of go in the holes here on the side. So when you want to put it back on, you just kind of set it back on, make sure it's lined up, right? And then you twist these and then you make sure that the little hook goes through and it's really sturdy, it doesn't come apart. So if you need a hard-sided carrier, whoops. If you need a hard-sided carrier for car trips for your rabbit, um, I really recommend this one. Um, it's really nice. It's worked for Daisy and um, one thing I like about it is I, whenever we went on car trips, we would also use this as a hide. So we would put this in her soft-sided pen so that she would have something to hide in because 
it was a lot of work to pack for her. And so we wouldn't want, we didn't want to take all these extra hides that we didn't need. So this was her hide inside her um, soft sided pen. And when you are traveling, you want to kind of, you know, condense, take as little things as that you need to as possible. So it's really nice that this carrier was able to double as a hide as well. So this is the soft sided carrier that I got for Daisy last year. Um, the brand is called Zampa. This is actually made for a dog and it might look backwards on the screen to you guys, but this is what it looks like. And the first one I bought of this was way too small. Um, so I ended up sending it back and getting a new one because I wanted Daisy to have enough space um, in her pen when I wasn't there. So now I'm gonna show you guys um, how I set it up and about how big it is. Okay, so this is what the pen looks like all set up. That's how big it is. Um, it's actually pretty big. Uh, and it even comes with this top, which I really like. So if you're going somewhere that has cats or dogs that can jump, or I guess a big dog could get through this, but a little dog definitely couldn't. So you can just pull back the top and um, take care of your rabbit. All of Daisy's stuff fits really nicely in here. Um, this actually has two doors. So there's a door here, which you can actually roll this up, which is what the, this Velcro is here for. You can roll it up and it will stay up. So it has a front doorway and a back doorway, both of which can be rolled up. Now, like I said, this, so yeah, so there's the back door. Whoops, there's the back door. And like I said, this is not meant to be a permanent home for your rabbit. Um, as you can see, Daisy has chewed a small hole in this um, already because we used it a lot last year. Now, I don't really anticipate ever needing to use this again with Daisy. However, if you have other small animals, like this pen could also be good as a hamster exercise pen, a puppy play pen. It could be used um, for like if you're traveling with ferrets or basically any type of small animal and you need to keep them in a temporary enclosure for a short amount of time, this would be really good for them. And just for size comparison, I have placed Daisy's carrier inside the, inside the pen so that you can see just how big it is. Um, let's see, let me open this up a little more. So you can see just how big this pen is. That carrier is plenty big enough for Daisy. She has plenty of room, at least she is close to the amount of room that she would have in her crate in this pen, which is really nice if you're traveling. And this is all the bigger the case is. So this case is pretty small. I'll put it in the pen so you can kind of see for size. And this pen is really light and really portable. And I will say that I even have a suitcase that is big enough to fit this inside. So even if you cannot carry it, like if you're flying or whatever, or even if you just don't want to have it in the car, you can get a suitcase that can fit this pen inside. So I will say this pen is a little bit harder to put back together. Um, I'm not going to show you guys how I do that because I am not very good at it. I usually get, have to get Alex to help me. So I guess that's the only downside about this pen, but once you kind of figure it out, um, it works really well and especially, you know, I don't, I think I only paid like 40 bucks or something for this pen. So it was very reasonable and it worked really good for Daisy when we were traveling. So if you take your rabbit somewhere, this is an awesome pen. If you have to take your rabbit on a trip or you want to take them with you, get this pen. I really recommend it and I 
think I should be able to link it down in the description below for you guys. So in the next part of this video, I am going to be setting up Daisy's weekend pen or, you know, her kind of travel pen when we leave. Like I said, Alex and I are going to a wedding this weekend, so we have to set up this pen for her anyway. This is where she's gonna be living for the next few days. Although, even though I'm gonna be setting it up right now, I'm not gonna be putting her in it until tomorrow, right before we leave. So I'm just gonna show you guys how I set it up and what all goes into it. It's kind of involved, cause it kind of has to be, it has to be like, strong enough for her not to get out and we have to kind of fortify it a little bit because she's kind of feisty she will try to move the pen and stuff and she is strong enough to move it a little bit so i'm just going to show you guys how we set it up and what we do so that if you need any ideas you know you can get them from us so here we go So this is what the pen looks like. I finally got it set up. Now I will be honest and tell you guys that I usually don't set up Daisy's going away pen. It's usually Alex who sets that up. So this was my first time doing it by myself um, because Alex didn't really want to be in the video and I really wanted to show you guys. Now this isn't, it doesn't always exactly look like this, but this is the main gist. So we have what we have here is starting from the bottom, we have two tarps that were very cheap. I think we got one as like a Christmas present and the other one we got from, from Menards for very cheap. This gray carpet is also from Menards, super cheap. And we have these two X pens. I had one, so this one here in the front is the one I had for Daisy from when she was a little baby. And we bought this other one. now. The reason why we have two is because when Alex and I lived in his apartment here in Illinois, um, Daisy had a much larger area. We used pretty much both of these pens stretched out. She had a 12 by five area that she was in all the time. Now we didn't free roam her as much then, but we did give her a huge area and we kept her set up for when we go away. Now we have a couple of chairs around the outside. I place them because um, Daisy will try to move this pen. She'll try to move it and try to chew up the tarp underneath and we do not want her to do that. But this pen is still pretty big. Even though it's not as big as her 12 by five area, you know, it's, it's still pretty big. And this carpet is exactly 12 by five feet. 12 feet by five feet, that's what it measures. And this room is obviously square and it's kind of small, so that carpet was not gonna fit in here. And if you could see in the time lapse, I was trying to figure out which way to put the carpet. But I think Alex usually puts it vertically, so that's what I did. So it goes with the grain of the wood in the room. And this isn't actually wood, it's like laminate. But it goes with the grain of the laminate flooring and this is what we got. Now we might change it tomorrow because Alex might come here and he, and he might, you know, kind of help me fix it. If we change it, I will film it right before we leave and let you guys know how it actually turned out. But this is the gist of it. And we have, we would always put this carpet down because we didn't want her to get to the floor. Especially if you have carpet in your house, you need to have something protecting the floor which we paid like, I don't know, 20 bucks for this cheap piece of carpet. And the tarps underneath it are for moisture protection in case she decided not to use her litter box and she was just gonna pee on the carpet. Or if her water bowl spilled or something, it wouldn't hurt the carpet of the apartment. So that is what we have um, in this pen. Daisy is coming over to check it out because that's what she likes to do. And she, she likes this pen pretty good. I mean, she doesn't like it when we leave. She gets kind of cranky and kind of mad at us when we leave. Um, 
but if it's just a weekend, she's fine. But every time we leave for an extended period of time, she always gets kind of mad at us. And she doesn't like, she doesn't really let us pet her. She doesn't really trust us for about a week and then she's fine. But so this is the pen. You can kind of see how big it is compared to Daisy. She cannot jump over this fence. She's never once done it. And you know, we don't put anything in here like her wooden hide we never put it right up against the fence because we don't want her standing on it and jumping over the fence so this is what we have so this is what daisy stays in when we go away and this works out really well for us okay guys that is it thank you guys so much for tuning in to fin scales and fluffy tails and watching this how to travel with your rabbit video um, I know there's not a ton of videos out there about this topic, but if you want to learn more about flying with your rabbit, definitely check out the channel Len and the Bunny. I know she has flown with her rabbit several times. She also has some good travel tips on there, but I figured, you know, I would, you know, add to the conversation and share what I do with my rabbit so that you guys could get some ideas because, you know, uh, well, I think Laurel, I said this in her videos, like there's not that many travel items for rabbits. So you kind of have to, you know, get a little creative, which is what I have tried to do. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.